What's going on my Cardano friends? It's your friend Jack here and today we're going to be going over something really important for navigating the Cardano space and that is how to do your own research or DYOR and due diligence and really make up your own mind when deciding is this project something I want to invest in or if you're voting for these projects on the Catalyst event, is this a project I want to see move further forward and provide funding to? So. With that being said, let's get right into the video and I'm going to explain to you my thought processes and how I judge projects. Just before we get into this video, a little self promo and a disclaimer. If you guys want to earn passive ADA with your ADA, you can stake with my pool, ticker symbol Jack and help decentralize the Cardano network as thanks to, you know, making this video maybe, but you don't have to do that. You can really stake with anyone. Just make sure you're staking your freaking ADA. Now, disclaimer. For this video, I want you guys to keep in mind that I'm going to have my own biases, I'm going to have my own opinions on projects, and I'm going to give examples in this videos of projects that I don't like and tell you why I don't like them. Not that I think they're bad projects, but just for reasons that I don't want to invest in them and I don't really want to put my funding votes towards them over other projects. Now, this video is going to be comprised of a lot of opinions, but mostly I want to just tell you guys the number one factor for me determining whether a project is something I want to spend my time looking at, uh, paying attention to, putting my money in, is integrity, okay? Keep in mind, I'm just a kid living in my mom's basement, and everything I say is going to have its own biases, but integrity is really important and yesterday i spent a lot of time with some people who are building on cardano and people with high integrity are always going to have a vote of confidence in my books now integrity aside let's take a look at some examples okay or integrity uh, in thought let's take a look at some examples so dear wallet they are essentially looking to be a wallet building on cardano and a cardano wallet application and I was really interested in this wallet at first, but since then, um, I've done my own research. I've looked into their team, and there's many ways you can do this. First way is you can go to their Twitter and check out their community engagement. Check out what people are saying. Go to Twitter. Go to Discord. Go to their channels. See what people are saying about it. Search Jira Wallet here. See what people are saying. You're going to see the tweet I just pulled up is here. So did you know multiple companies have been working on libraries and standards to enable connecting Cardano dApps to wallets? Similar to MetaMask, which I covered in the other video, one of the applications called Nami Wallet is doing this um, from one guy in his mom's attic. And Jira Wallet is not being involved in this process um, of contributing to basically solve this problem, but they're asking 50000 dollars worth of cardano for exactly that in the catalyst voting so they're asking for money to do something that people are already working towards and coming together to do and they're asking a lot of money fifty thousand dollars to do so now the creator of nami wallet alessandro actually confirmed that there's no reason to request fifty thousand dollars for that and can and themselves, Alessandro, has contributed to these standards and libraries already with the NAMI wallet. So already a huge vote of integrity in my books towards Alessandro. And I really do like everything else Alessandro is doing with pretty much minimal funding whatsoever. And NAMI wallets being a fully functional wallet. So I'm going to click it here just to show you because I actually really like it. And it's a fully functional wallet and we're, we haven't even launched uh, Cardano smart contract so already has a functional product and something to keep in mind is integrity now i'm going to dive deeper into jira wallet here just in this example when you look at an application or you're looking at something to invest in you should always make up your own mind now when i look at jira wallet i do kind of get sketched out okay because they have done things that aren't the most uh you know indicators of good integrity uh, they have put out kind of weird charts that have huge biases to them in their media. And if you're following a project that you want to know it's good, it's good to follow them on social media and Discord to see what's going on. Even if they're, you know, you don't, because following them is going to give you a good idea of what they're showing to their community. And what they're showing their, to their community is important. Now, something like Cardano has so many projects building on it. And you're not going to be able to be 100% certain if a project is good or bad or if it's going to, if it's doing good things or not doing good things. So you just have to kind of 
use your own sniffer and make your own smell tests, right? Uh, is, is this something I want to invest in? Uh, I don't know. And for Jira Wallet, the reason I don't really like Jira Wallet that much compared to the other wallets on the platform, and I'm not knocking them, well, I am knocking them, but this is my personal opinion, is because they're trying to do things which I don't think are, you know, that practical. So first of all, they're asking $50,000 for something that's already being done and they're not contributing to. I'm not a big fan of that, but they're also doing things that are mainly marketing based. So their marketing basically is exceeding what they're actually putting together. Um, their, their presentation is good, yes, but what are they actually doing? What are they actually building? Something like NAMI Wallet, I would put my support towards more because they've actually built something and they've done less talk and more walk. So that is how I decipher if a project is going to be good, if it's gonna be worth my time, and if I want to put a vote of confidence towards it. There's also many other things to consider here, including open source code. So if a project is not completely open source before they release, that's that's understandable, right? But there should be some indication of what they're building and what they have so far. Now with Jiro, you can go to their website and you can see everything on their website. You can even see their team. And I do like their team section, okay? Something to keep in mind is when I see a team, I like seeing faces, I really do. And also, I prefer seeing last names. Last names to me are an indication of even more, right? Without a last name, it's kind of fishy. I'm not a big fan of no last names. Now, if the project does have last names on their team, most of the time you can go to their LinkedIn profiles and LinkedIn is a great way to see what the experience of these members are. Is there experience in companies that are dealing with actual Cardano based things? Um, or is it relevant to what they're building? Jira Wallet, they don't need a ton of Cardano experience. A lot of it is, you know, other programming languages and Haskell is not going to be as involved. So speaking of Haskell, when we're on Cardano projects like NAMI Wallet or whatever, Haskell is a very complex, pro very complex programming language. And I'm not going to try to understand and explain it to you. Like I know how to code in Haskell, but yesterday I did spend some time talking with people who are actually developing on Cardano and understand Haskell. And they confirmed to me that it is not easy. Seasoned programmers have a lot of trouble with it. So, Going to the LinkedIn side of things, if someone has, uh, you know, two two years of experience in programming and they're claiming to be a full on Haskell developer, that might smell fishy. So I'm going to keep in mind is that Haskell is not something that, e that is easy to pick up and you should be skeptical of projects that you're investing money into. Now, all of this being said, you have to do your own kind of thought processing here. What makes a good project? what do I want to see from a project? Do I want to see functionality or do I want to see flashy uh, <laughs> infographics, right? What do I want to see in a team? Do I want to see their last names, their photos? Do I want to see their experience? Uh, or do I want to see just what they've put out, right? So oftentimes what they've put out can be seen by actually interacting with it like NAMI Wallet, or you can go to their GitHub repo and don't go to the image, go to their actual GitHub repo and you can see the open source code basically on what's being updated, what's being done. And after you've done all this, after you've checked their LinkedIn profiles and you've done your due diligence on what the project does, you've compared it to maybe other teams, NAMI Wallet, Jira Wallet, two similar products, which one is doing more and which one is working towards a more high integrity mission. Once you've done that, you're gonna have a very good idea of which projects you wanna invest in and for me, obviously, I picked NAMI Wallet in the terms of Jira Wallet versus NAMI Wallet, okay? I'm not saying Jira Wallet's a scam. I'm not saying it's bad, you shouldn't go and, you know, buy Jira tokens, right? That's not what I'm saying at all. But I'm saying, do your own due diligence, do your own research, and this is how you do it. Um, and after you've done that, you can make your own decisions. You don't need someone on YouTube to tell you Jira Wallet to the moon, you don't need someone to tell you that because you're going to be able to do your own decisions and do your own research. Now, I know a lot of people on here, they don't want to do their own research and they want people to tell them. But the truth is, if someone's telling you what to do. It's never going to be completely in line with what you like, what you want to see. So this is how you do it. This is how I do my research. And it's a very high level overview of how I do my research. And I hope I explained it well enough. But 
If you want more videos on this, let me know. I'll do a part two. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been your friend Jack, broadcasting live from my mom's basement. If you want to support me, stake with my stake pool, or don't, just make sure you're staking with a stake pool. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.